I always called her my Velcro child because she, she never went out. She stayed home with me all the time. I was gonna leave that day before Shane came up with my brother and I just decided I didn't have anything else to do to do, so I just decided to stay up there. Um, you could see slowly throughout the night, before the ball dropped, Elise and Shane getting closer and closer. Heading back to Brunswick, I remember riding back with Sam and just kind of having like a silent pause and just looking at each other and then just bolting into conversation. Like, he's like, I felt... I just, knew it. Uh, we were in the car ride on the way home the next day, and I was like, Shane, you gotta, you gotta talk to Evan, you gotta get his sister's number or something. He was like, I'm already a step ahead of you. And uh, next thing you knew it, they were on a trip uh, to the Bahamas. One New Year's, I believe, a couple of years ago, when we all decided to go up to Sugarloaf and ski, my sister came up too, and then I went to bed early, and I guess that's when they started hanging out, and next thing I know, they're dating, so. <laughs> so he was always a year behind her in school, and they really didn't know each other, but we have a picture of them, and Shane's dad was coaching their, um, their rec soccer team and there's so there's Shane and Elise and their little Shane is a little bow cut and they were both like they're both toe heads it was it's beautiful and Elise has pink and purple and these big old socks on it's so cute it's just so cute <laughs> It's sure cool if it wasn't like, oh, I'm gonna drop anchor, marry this girl, done over, I want a family. But it was definitely like, you know, I dated multiple girls in the past and I was coming off kind of a year and a half, like, single spree. And it was a weird feeling that I hadn't had since, you know, junior high, where you're like, you're completely clueless as to what to say. It's not like, usually I could come into it and you know, have something like to grab onto for a conversation or you know, something we could relate on, but it didn't matter that like, I knew our family like up, down, everywhere, you know, we grew up together. It was just kind of like learning how to date again. And that's what made it fun. And I guess that's what ended up being like, you know, you start to like someone and then you fall in love. And then by the time I'd really figured out I was in love, I was, you know, I don't want to, I'd, I'd want more. <laughs> we go, can we do like where are these every Friday? <laughs> <laughs> You know, here's Shane, this fine young man who's sitting there and uh, telling me about his future and shipping out and about having children and and I'm thinking, whoa, and then he starts dating my daughter. I'm just like, oh. You know, we talked about it. it wasn't like when I proposed it wasn't like at a left field, like, marry me. All right, cool. It was, you know, we'd we'd progressed to the point where we talked about like things we wanted in life and not like I'd like a Ferrari or something. It was like, you know, we both like want kids and we talked about that and, you know, I definitely surprised her, but, you know, it wasn't, you know, a big surprise person. As most of you know, Elise, I have always said, is my Velcro child. She was the one that stayed home next to mama, didn't go out, didn't have a boyfriend, didn't date, and I was ready at times to kind of kick her and say, oh, oh, oh. But I always knew that when it was right, and when it happened, it was gonna happen quickly. And I was surprised it happened quite that quickly, but <laughs> nonetheless, very pleased. But I wanna say, I think that Elise has been preparing for this all of her life. 
she, I think, as a child, knew the man that she wanted. So I have a little something for Shane, just so he knows exactly that she knew what she was waiting for. <laughs> the only time in our long relationship that she'll actually be the one saluting, saluting me. <laughs> so, I want everyone to witness this as I pass it around that oh, I'm the yeah. boss. That is so sweet. I, I'd, I'd, like, I'd like to thank everyone that's been involved. You've all been involved in a different uh, shape or form, whether it's a groomsman, a bridesmaid, a grandparent, uh, a parent, or a fiance. Uh, I'd like to thank you for all being here with us and uh, I'm looking forward to tonight's bowling. You're all gonna lose. And uh, <laughs> tomorrow's festivities. Here, I'm gonna Stupid bowl. Bad. I'm right, gonna bowl and get a strike, and then you're gonna kill it. Ready? One. Strike! <laughs> <laughs> Who in this group won at bowling last night? Me, right. Elise. Every single time. <laughs> I was bowling for everyone. We played bowling for hours. I think we were just trying to let you win, so yeah, that, you, yeah. Know, yeah. you felt better about yourself. <laughs> That's exactly why. I'm so wrapped up like a almost overwhelming. Bev and I have been together for, we've been married for 56 years. And we went together all through high school and we've been soulmates all these years. But I've got to tell you uh, something that needs to be added to what's been said here. And I'll, I'll add that in a minute, but I want to tell you something about our particular marriage and a lesson I learned early on. And all of you take heed to this. Uh, I was brought up in a, in a good home. Uh, my mom and dad were good people. And uh, my father and my mother both uh, treated us really well. My father had a habit occasionally of raising his voice, which I didn't like, but I understood what it meant. And so, but we never did this through our relationship, our early relationship. We were married, and I don't remember just when this happened, but it was sometime after we were married. Um, I raised my voice. And I saw the expression on her face. I saw the hurt. I saw the disbelief. I saw this, the, almost the spirit of, wow, I've never seen this out of you before. And at that moment, that expression burned in my heart. And I took that as a lesson that never, 
never, never do you need, unless you've got a deaf spouse, raise your voice. <laughs> and that's happening now in our <laughs> Emily, come here, darling. No, I'm just saying that I'm going to change my shoes. Okay, honey, you're beautiful. You're beautiful. We're living our dream with our son and our daughter and our daughter-in-law. We're so happy. And you women that are doing all this art are amazing. And on that note, I wanted one more of those lobster things. I don't need the potato, but I want the lobster. <laughs> She's just become this new person with Shane. It's it's amazing. It's amazing. I mean, her friends, her family, we all see it. Oh it's like gosh. finally we have Elise as a whole person. All right, I'm gonna do it again. <laughs> yes. We've been friends since first grade. Jane is, is, I've known her since she was a baby. Born. <laughs> because my, my mom and her mom are best friends. And they've been best friends since growing Ever. up. <laughs> and then this was my roommate senior year of college. Oh my You're my roommate now, too. You're going to be so lonely when you this leave. This is my <laughs> other daughter. Yes. Well, these are my daughters. Oh. I have all kinds of sons and all kinds of daughters. <laughs> and she collects them. <laughs> It's a hobby. <laughs> and I was supposed to have one more for so I think. My cousin, but she's yes. studying abroad. I don't want to go to their parents. So she can come.
none of us can look around here and say there's not a God. Look at this. Look at these beautiful women, these handsome men, <laughs> the opportunities in life. Change this world for us. Make your contribution. In your relationship, Shane and Elise, Pap, Nan and Pap, Bev's folks, made one request of us. And that was that we take time each day, preferably at the dinner table, to praise God for our food, our family, our life together, and we've taken that to heart. So we've found that our relationship has become a triangular relationship. God has got to be in your relationship. Demonstrate that, appreciate it, use it for support to enhance your love and respect for one another. May God bless you too and all of you is my prayer. I've yet to meet someone like Elise during the 17 years that I've known her. She's loyal, thoughtful, and compassionate, and has provided me the firm footing that all friendships deserve, but not all are lucky enough to have. And our paths have not always run parallel, but she's never failed to be solid ground for me. I know in your future together, she will provide you with the support that is needed to sustain the unpredictable swells of a relationship and to brighten the cloudiest of days. I have faith she will act as an anchor in your life as she has done in mine. I assure you, you've been blessed with good fortune and with fair winds. Here's to the past for all that you've learned, here's to the present for all that you share, and here's to the future for all that you have to look forward to together. Cheers. for, well, since 1987, the birth of Elise, and I just want to pass one of these along to Shane. Shane, if you hold on to this for your life and uh, don't smoke it, it's, a, it's probably no good anymore anyway. So I honestly wasn't prepared to uh, be doing a speech this early in my, in my lifetime. Uh, I, I honestly thought another five years, like, at least my, one of my good friends would be uh, getting married, but um, I, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I remember the day um, Shane and Elise met at Sugarloaf, and uh, a few days after that, they were in the, in the Bahamas vacationing, and <laughs> a few days after they got back from that, Shane was already shopping for uh, a wedding ring, <laughs> and uh, a few days after they met, here we are today at their wedding. <laughs> 